Okay, thank you for the introduction and um, thank you for inviting me to speak here. Um, I have, I apologize for two things. One, I, I have nothing to say about perfectoid spaces in this talk. And then the second is even though there's explicit formula in my title, I won't tell you what the explicit formula are. But I hope by the end of the talk you, would, you won't mind this too much. Okay, so um, first I'll tell you about Gross-Stark units, so how they are defined. And here's a bit of a setup. Uh, so F is a totally real number field. And H is a abelian CM extension with Galois group G. So this is abelian and finite. Okay. And if I have uh, S is a set of a finite set of primes of F. Uh, Okay, and T is T is again a finite non-empty set of primes of F such that S does not intersect with with T, um, and K is some character of the absolute Galois group of F one-dimensional character, then I, I define L, S, T, chi, S, uh, at least for real part of S bigger than one, and then the usual analytic kind. Sorry? It's the oh, it's, uh, oh, okay, sorry. I can see it very well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, is that better? Yes. So V not in S, one minus chi of v norm of v to the minus s, and then at t I do some modification. So this is the usual kind of modification. So uh, one minus chi of v uh, norm of v to the one minus s. Okay, so I'll need this notation. Uh, uh, to, to make various things integral. So here it is. And this is a priori for real part of S bigger than one, as I said, but there's meromorphic continuation to whole of the complex numbers. Okay, so, so this is my T, this is my S, finite set of primes of F. Right now this has nothing to do with H. Um, sorry? Chi minus one? No? Oh. No, no, this is what I want. One minus chi of V over norm of V to the S inverse. And these are the usual oil effect. No, this is a, what I wrote. So, yeah. 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 This is not an Euler factor. It's some modification you do to, to make things integral, what I'm going to say later on. Okay, so, uh, so here's what I'm going to define. Uh, R is precisely the set of, uh, this is uh, the set of, of primes uh, of F that ramify in H. Okay, I won't have any Archimedean primes in my notation. Uh, it's all, doesn't matter. So, um, so what happens is, uh, so this is a fact due to several people. So let me write down some names uh, and then say what I mean. So Shintani, Lingen, Cassel, uh, Nocus, Deline, and Ribet. So, 
there exist theta s r t in z g such that chi, so I can evaluate this element in the group ring at any character of g, I get L R T chi inverse at zero. So value of this L function at zero. Okay, so for any character chi of G, and I won't be very precise about where this character takes values, it's finite order character, so I'll, it will take values in Q bar and I'll fix an embedding of Q bar in QP bar and C and so on, so the usual thing. Okay, so this value is zero if chi is uh, not totally odd and if it's totally odd, this is non-zero. So those are the only, uh, so the minus part of this group ring is what I would be interested in, okay? So, so what, what, what are all these names? So Kling, Shintani and Klingen prove that this lives in QG, so it takes uh, rational values. Um, they did not need this T in there um, because that's to make things integral and then Kasanogas and uh, um, oh, Shint Ziegel. So that's what I thought, I forgot one. <laughs> yeah, Ziegel, Klingen and Shintani proved that it's rational, and then Casanogas and Delindre, but some years later proved that it's integral with this modification, this, this very nice modification. It comes up naturally from many points of view. Okay, so that's one object that I need. The other object is, is the class group, is a, is a class group of H. So I'll denote uh, this class group by Okay, so this is class group of H where I allow, uh, so this is, um, so what, what, I mean it's using class field theory, it's the Galois group of some extension of H and what kind of extension do I have? I allow, um, okay, so uh, corresponds to, to abelian, extension of H um, in which primes in T, so primes in H above T are at most teamly ramified And primes in in R are completely split so this is the way I would state my con <laughs> the conjecture of rumor in this situation so so conjecture this is sort of a, one way to formulate rumors classical conjecture that the, uh, this is more precise than what Brumer did, so this, that uh, this annihilates the, the, the class group. So uh, the ZG module and everything else is unramified. C L R T H is annihilated by theta r t, yeah, theta r t, okay? So that's the, that's, that's one way to formulate Brumer's conjecture. Yeah, it's enough to take one prime of large enough residue characteristic. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, the group is bigger because you're allowing ramification at all those places in T. Yeah, otherwise it's unramified. Sorry, yeah, I, I, I said that when I started writing this. Anything which is not in R or T is, is unramified, yeah. Uh, oh, this is the narrow class group. Yeah, sorry, yes, narrow class group. Okay, so that's. Oh, HCM, you're right. Yeah, yeah, so it's narrow class group. <clears throat> um, okay, so, so that's a conjecture of Brumer, so I'll, now, often this is called Brumer Stark conjecture because of the following kind of relation. So, so what I'll do is I'll take a a, a prime in. Uh, so let P be a prime of F, which is uh, completely split. in H, okay, so, uh, so if you consider um, U, let me write it like this, UP uh, to be all U's in H cross such that equal to one uh, for all places, including the Archimedean places, not above P. So, so I'm including Archimedean places W, which means that it's, a, it's in the minus part of, of H cross, and U is congruent to one modulo all the primes in T, okay, then, then uh, Dirichlet's unit theorem tells you that <coughs> uh, so again, I, I, I did not say, yeah, I should have said here that uh, either I want two uh, primes of two different residue characteristic in T, or as Mladen pointed out, a prime of large enough residue characteristic in T, and only then this is true. Similarly here, I have to take T to be, um, to have at least two primes of different residue characteristic, or a prime of large enough residue characteristic for this to be true. So UP uh, is, a, uh, is a rank one ZP, uh, yeah, Z, ZG minus uh, module, okay, so uh, minus I, I, I define as a submodule on which complex conjugation acts as minus one, because I have not inverted two, the quotient and the sub won't be the same, but I take the sub here. So there is a conjecture of Stark which says uh, and it's equivalent to this in, in this case. So it says that um, uh, there exist U in UP such that um, so I fix a prime Uh, such that odd P of uh, sigma U for sigma any element in the Galois group, this is equal to the um, uh, to this rational number. So what is this rational number? Theta R T. This is an element of the group ring, and I can write this as. Uh, as sigma in G of sigma zeta H over F sigma zero. Uh, 
Yeah, so these are the partial zeta functions. Um, so it's easy to see how to go from this conjecture to that, and the other way around is basically like the proof of Stickelberger's theorem. So, uh, so I'll, I'll say how one goes from Brumer to Brumer implies Stark. So, um, yeah. So if f is, uh, if h is abelian over q, then these are all theorems. No, not, not, uh, not in general, no. Yeah, so uh, let me say this, and then I'll tell you what's known about Brumer and Stark. Um, so what you do is uh, fix p in h above p, and you look at its class, in CL RT, and then the conjecture of Brumer says that this applied to the class is, is generated by a unit, uh, is generated by a, by, it's, a, it's a principal ideal, and in fact it's generated by a P unit which is congruent to one mod T, okay? So that's why it, because, because of the way this class group is defined. Okay, so so this gives, so then, yeah, this is this finishes the sketch. So this is the uh, u we want. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So what's the role? Uh, Yeah, there is no, I mean, very little as such because I have taken R to be the minimal set where, uh, which I have to take. It's the, it's the set where H over, it, it, it precisely contains the primes which ramify in H over F. Okay? Uh, yeah, so, so if I take a bigger R, then, then I'll have to say something about its role in, in Stark's conjecture, but otherwise I don't have to. Because I've taken the minimal R that I, that I can. Okay, so um, before I say what's known about this conjecture, let me tell you, uh, so again, this P does not have much to do with R or, or T, so it sort of doesn't seem, doesn't seem to have much to do with Brumer's conjecture. And in fact, I can take more than one prime, so I can take, I can take P1, PR, uh, primes of F that split completely in H, okay, they need not have, they, they don't even need to have same residue characteristic, okay, and I can, I can still define uh, U P1 up to PR uh, just as before, all, all elements in H cross, um, such that mod U to uh, sub W is one for all places of H not above these R places. And then it's true that this has rank R over uh, uh, ZG minus. And you can ask for something in, in its, okay, so this has, so this has rank R over z g minus, and then one guess would be you 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 need to have some element u. Okay, so so how to generalize Stark's conjecture uh, in the rth exterior power of this, and that 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 guess is somehow false. What you need to uh, so so. Uh, so the, the conjecture is, is sort of the correct conjecture is made by 
by Rubin using what's called Rubin's lattice. So, so there exists U in Rubin. I, I won't say much about sort of R, R bigger than one. That's why I won't state it any more precisely. Um, such that, so, so this Rubin's lattice is also sometimes called exterior bidual nowadays. Uh, slightly more general notion due to Takemichi Sano and David Burns. So this is denoted like this. Uh, this seems to be the right place for Euler systems to live, apparently. Uh, so the point is that uh, there is a map from exterior power, this, this thing to to, uh, to Rth exterior power of, of, of Q tensored with this over Qg minus. Uh, it's not injective, of course, in general. And this object lives somewhere in between. So you allow some denominators, right? carefully chosen denominator. So there exists this such that, um, yeah, so, so this is not literally true, but I, I'll write it like this. So. I mean, yeah, the, uh, okay, I, I won't, so what I'm going to write is, is true, but I, I have not told you how to, you know, define this odd map on the exterior bidual. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, and this is, uh, this is, I'm not taking any, any sigma of this, so, so a lot of things are hidden in this notation, which I'm not going to make explicit. So this is simply this element, okay? So there is an odd map from this exterior bidual into Z into ZG, and when I apply that odd map to my special element, which is conjectured by, uh, yeah, which is which appears in this conjecture, I get my element in ZG back. Okay, so so this is some technical way of extending uh, Stark's conjecture uh, when you when you consider more than one prime, so one uh, which split completely in H. So a way to look at Stark's conjecture is it always tells you uh, something about these uh, you know special elements in units when you fix some places which which are completely split in that extension. So so if you take a totally real extension of a totally real field, that's when the Archimedean places uh, come into the picture. But if you take CM extension of a totally real field, then the Archimedean places are not split, so they don't appear in this picture at all. So instead, you take the non Archimedean places to split and then try to come up with a precise integral conjecture. So that's, that's what Rubin Stark conjecture does. Okay, now you can ask me what, if that implies that, and can we go the other way around? So that does, I mean, this does not imply that as far as I know. You need a stronger version of this with fitting ideals and something. So that does imply this one. Whether you can go back or not, I, I'm not sure. But even the implication with fitting ideals, the, the stronger version implying that, it doesn't seem to be in the literature. So, uh, so you have to believe me when I say this implies that. Uh, okay. Um, okay, what is known about this conjecture, Brumer's conjecture? So, not much. Uh, uh, there is a, um, yeah, so, so this conjecture is, is uh, the strongest result is, is conditional, which is uh, in general, so uh, of course if f is equal to q, then, then everything is known, but otherwise, uh, uh, David Burns proves a stronger version of this conjecture, assuming uh, non-vanishing of gross Stark regulator and assuming um, uh, vanishing of mu invariant. Okay, so, so he assumes two very strong conjectures and then, then he can prove this uh, conjecture. But unconditioned, and, and uh, Greither and Popescu prove a, a, a conjecture a form of this conjecture where they don't take S to be the minimal set. So then it becomes easier. Right? So, so, so it's, it's kind of, I mean, most of the, in most of the interesting cases, they are proving zero annihilates the class group. So it's not very interesting in my opinion. Okay. Um, all right, so, so that's about stuff. Why, why am I interested in this? Uh, so, uh, 
So relation with Hilbert's 12th problem. So what I do is, um, okay, so what I'm going to tell you is that these special units in here, they generate, I mean, they, they generate a large chunk of H. So in fact, I'm going to tell, uh, write down a more precise statement. Uh, okay, so, so what, what I do is I fix the prime ideal P of F and an integral ideal f of f such that p does not divide f and what I'll do is I'll let h sub f p uh, be the maximal abelian cm extension of f uh, of conductor dividing uh, F and in which P splits completely. Okay, so so Stark's conjecture gives me Stark's conjecture that I stated above gives me U F sub P as an element in in H. And what one can prove easily, assuming, assuming Brumer Stark conjecture, is that uh, if I join all these units to, to F, I get the maximal abelian CM extension of F. Okay, so, so fact is that uh, F, so, so I, I, I let P and F vary over all possible choices satisfying those conditions. This is the maximal abelian CM extension of F. Okay, so, so then if you want to construct the uh, maximal abelian extension of F, you just have to adjoin some uh, signs to this, right? You, you fix a, uh, a so if, if the degree of f over q is d, then you, you fix some d minus 1 elements which give you, which forms a basis of all possible signs of f, and then you adjoin its square root, and that will give you the maximal abelian extension of f. But this is the large chunk that one would like to construct, and these are precisely the extension that doesn't that don't uh, sort of fall under the theory of CM multiplication, right? So yeah, under uh, Shimura and Taniyama's theory. So the, the extensions that they cannot construct are precisely the ones coming from abelian extensions of totally real, maximal totally real subfield of that CM extension. Okay, so, uh, so Hilbert's 12th problem uh, asks for uh, explicit formulae for generators of abelian extension. And I have not said anything about explicit formula yet, but I, I, I have picked out some nice elements uh, which generate the maximal abelian CM extension. So, so are there, so natural question is, by the way, these are, the, these are called the gross Stark units, okay? So, Are there explicit and maybe analytic is 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 what they had in mind formally uh, for the gross stark units um, UFP. Okay. Um, so so the the I mean, Brumer's conjecture and Stark's conjecture tells you that these elements should exist, and if I had formulated them carefully enough, I could even write uniquely. So, uh, 
they determine these these conjectures determine these units uh, uniquely, but they, they don't tell you how to construct them. They don't give you any formula for it. They just tell you what its periodic order is. And, and sorry? Well, they're P units, yeah. Yeah, this, this is just the kind of term that's used uh, anyway, yeah. No, I, I just mean P units. They're not, yeah. Um, Yeah, vary all the p's over primes of f, and then, then once you have p, then you take f to be any integral ideal which is co prime to p. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, so if. Uh, uh, all right. So are there any. So uh, what happens is, is uh, Gross gave a conjecture, which is called the Gross Stark conjecture, which gives you some information about these, and then, so I'm going to state that conjecture now, uh, which is now a theorem. So, and then I'll tell you how the refinement of, of these help you uh, to get explicit formulae for this, and, and that's the main theorem. So, uh, so there's periodical function, again state, <laughs> Yeah, I just rubbed this, so. Kassau uh, Nokus and Delin Ribet. So they, in general, constructed a, in this level of generality, it's due to these people. So, so let chi be a totally odd character of G, then they they construct a uh, yeah. If if you if you don't like periodical functions attached to totally odd characters, this is a this is the periodic Tachymiller character. So now I've fixed a prime p. Okay, uh, up to now there was no I wasn't doing anything periodic. Uh, so they constructed a periodic um, meromorphic function which interpolates the, the following values. So, uh, so L, P, chi, omega at N, this uh, interpolates. So I don't strictly need T, but I'm going to, okay, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll drop it. Chi omega to the N, N for all N less than or equal to zero. Okay, and what is S? Now S is R union all primes P of F which divide my, my P. Right? So I, I need to include those. So if I, if I don't write an S here, it just means that I don't do that modification. If I don't write T here, it just means that I'm not doing that modification at T. Okay, so in particular, this is uh, possibly, so, L chi product over all P dividing uh, P, one minus chi P, N of P to the minus, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, minus N. Right, so I'm, I'm removing the Euler factors at, at those primes above P, if, if P is ramified, then this is just zero, so it's just one minus zero, so I'm not, this is all right. So if I don't write anything here, I, it means that I'm taking the smallest possible set for chi. Okay, so, so you notice that if chi of P is one for any P in there, L P chi omega zero is zero, okay? So that's, that's an easy observation. Um, so, so here is what Gross conjectured, first conjecture of Gross, which is still open uh, if R is equal to number of P 
places p dividing p such that chi of p is 1, then order of vanishing at s equal to 0 of L p chi omega s is r. Okay, the order of vanishing is precisely r. So this is what Tenney called um, extra zeros. So there are r extra zeros, conjecturally, exactly r extra zeros, or the traditional term is sort of trivial zeros, or sometimes also called exceptional zeros. So there are three names which, which uh, for the same thing, trivial zeros, tr exceptional zeros, or extra zeros. Um, okay, so what is known about this conjecture? So of course if uh, order of vanishing of LP chi omega s bigger than or equal to R is known. Okay, so when R is, is 1, this is trivial as I just said, but when R is bigger than 1, it's, it's, it's quite hard to prove. And the first proof of this is due to Wiles when p is odd. So what you do is uh, you use the main conjecture that Wiles proved and, and on the, for the characteristic element you show that it has a zero of order at least r. And that's why it follows for the periodical function because Wiles proves that the order of vanishing at all zeros, in particular at trivial zeros, also matches up. So this is the hardest part of Wiles's paper in my opinion. And then in general, this was, um, uh, yeah, in general meaning even with, uh, with p equal to 2, this was proved by Das Gupta and Spies, and their, their proof is completely analytic, so it doesn't go through main conjecture. Okay, so, so that's what is known about this conjecture. So, uh, so this is conjecture two, uh, which 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 tells you what the rth derivative of this uh, um, this L function is. So now this is this is a theorem due uh, due to Das Gupta, Darmo, and Pollock and Ventulo when r is one and due to Das Gupta, myself, and Ventulo in general, okay? So R is bigger than or equal. And, and the proof somehow conceptually, there are, there's a lot of overlap between the two, but even in R equal to one case, there, there's sort of conceptual difference in the, in the third part of the proof. So I'll, I'll try to say something about steps of that proof, the, the proof of this theorem. Okay, so, L p r chi omega zero. So it, it wants to give a formula for this. And the formula is somehow, okay, so the rth derivative, it should be related to the complex L value. Okay, but I have thrown away, um, there's some normalization, and I have thrown away some uh, some Euler factors at at p that I don't that that are not zero. So um, so I want to put them back. Uh, so this is p dividing p such that chi of p is not one one minus chi of p. Okay. And then there's some periodic regulator, as, as we saw in Benoit's talk. Uh, but there's some, some other term as well, so let me, let me come to that. Uh, okay, so, so there's RP um, over, let me call it OP. So, so S prime is set of all P dividing P such that chi of P is equal to one. Okay, so then R P is my periodic regulator. So this is uh, Gross's regulator. 
Okay, so this is like analog of Leopold regulator, but at s equal to zero. So this is determinant of minus of periodic log. Uh, so what I do is I, I um, <clears throat> okay, so I, I'll, I'll tell you what what exactly I have to do, but uh, this is. Uh, norm from F. So let me write this as P1 up to PR, FPI over QP of UJ. So I'll tell you what these UJs are, but it's a, it's a, it's a determinant like this, and OP is, is, so these are P units, right? So, so I can even take odd, uh, of pi of uj, okay, and what are, what are these uh, uj's? So, so remember, I, I have this up1 up to upr. Now this is over over zg. So this is over over zg or zg minus. I take the chi component of this. So, uh, so in fact, because I'm not doing anything integrally, I can tensor it with some, some finite extension of QP and then take the chi inverse part of this. So this has, so E over QP is finite and large enough, which just means that it contains all the values of chi, and I can take the chi, chi component and, or chi inverse component. Of that E vector space. And this, this I will denote by U chi. So dimension over E of U chi is R and U1 up to UR is a basis of U chi. Okay, so that's just a basis of U chi. Okay, so, um, so that's, the, that's the gross stark conjecture as it's called. Um, so uh, one thing I want to point out is that this this statement doesn't depend on this statement. If conjecture one fails, then you have to prove something non-trivial, which is that this side and this side both are zero, okay? So this side is zero because of, of this results, and then you have to prove that R P k is also zero. So you just end up proving zero equal to zero, which may not sound very interesting, but it's still non-trivial to prove. Okay, so there's a way to, re uh, anyway, so, uh, before I go further, what does this what does this statement tell me about 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 these gross stark units? So in the case when r is equal to one, uh, th this gross stark conjecture gives me a formula for periodic log of norm of the gross stark unit. Okay, so I get a formula for periodic uh, log of a norm of unit. So when you take periodic log, you don't lose much information, but you're taking, so you, you get a formula for norm of, uh, of, of this gross stark unit. Of course, that's, if, if FPI, if FP is not equal to QP, you lose a lot of information when taking a norm. Nevertheless, it gives you a lot of information about the gross stark units. So, so this was, I th this was the motivation that Gross had to, to formulate this conjecture and, and a generalization that I'm going to come to in a minute. Yeah, yeah this, so this is over, so one. No, uh, this is only in S prime. Yeah, this is only over S prime. Yeah, uh, the, it's an R by R matrix that I'm taking determinant. Yeah, okay. uh, 
Yeah, it won't change because of this chi inverse thing. Yeah. Even if I take p units, all possible sort of p's, it won't change because of the, the chi inverse part, yeah. Okay, so, um, so one way to look at uh, so this was this is again due to gross and uh, and then he formulated his more general conjecture uh, is you you take you consider the following field of field extensions so you take the cyclotomic zp extension of of this, okay, and then your LP chi omega, so, so I will write, don't have much time, so I will write, uh, write S, this is an element in E, this is an element in, uh, I mean I, I want to write something like this, so E tensored ZPS, right? So this is Iwasawa algebra of this gamma, and because I, have, I don't have this T modification, it can have some, some denominators, okay? And in fact, it vanishes at S equal to zero and, and, and more. So, so S equal to, uh, to zero is, is the point that of interest. So, so this LP chi omega S, this in fact, uh, belongs to S to the R by this by this first conjecture or uh, not even conjecture this these results of this result. Okay, so 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 this this S is the augmentation ideal. I can do everything integrally and I can get rid of E, so don't worry about this. So this is the augmentation ideal, which means that LP chi omega S, this belongs to I to the R. And now if you look at its image, <coughs> in I to the R mod I to the R plus one is, is precisely the Rth derivative uh, at zero may be scaled by R factorial. Uh, so, so it's actually a number, right? I to the R mod I to the R plus one, it's, it's Zp or E in this case. So, um, so, so, so it's actually a number. On the other hand, you can also interpret these regulators as a, uh, as something, uh, as giving you an element in i to the r mod i to the r plus one. Okay, so how do you do that? You have these ui's inside uh, um, f p i, uh, or, or I mean, Okay, let me write it like this. You have these inside H cross, which is in F P I or P J cross, which is, so P J is any, any prime uh, of, of H above P J. So this is in here. And then I can put these in adults over F and then I can apply the reciprocity map uh, and and land inside the, the this Galois group, okay? So this this bigger Galois group. But because my my p splits completely, this actually lands inside gamma, okay? So a priori it lands in in uh, in this, but but because my p splits completely, it lands in gamma, and then log of norm of u i. Okay, this thing is, um, is, is equal to, uh, so, so let me call this whole thing G of UI minus one modulo, okay, so, so let, 
this is an equality in i mod i squared. Okay, so this thing is a is an element of the augmentation ideal, and I can look at it in i mod i square, and then it, it's actually a number. And what is that number? This is precisely this. Okay, so this is an exercise in class field theory, if you like. Uh, so, so this number is is precisely this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just put one elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so I can, I can, in, I can reinterpret my R P as determinant of U um, I minus one, where I and J vary over these R numbers. Okay. So, so this is again an element of I to the R mod I to the R plus one. Okay, so that, that's a way to, to, to reinterpret uh, uh, gross star conjecture, and, and that allows you to generalize it. The bell hasn't rung. Okay. Uh, okay, this reinterpretation. Uh, allows generalization, so, so what you do is you take f, and then you have your h, but now I can take any l, okay, uh, which is a, so that this is still abelian, okay, and I just uh, unramified outside a finite set of primes of f okay and and i um and and then i have a the these element theta s t so so finite set s this in Zg again uh, for the more general conjecture. I don't need anything p-adic, um, okay. And if I, if number of elements uh, p in S such that uh, p splits completely in H, if this is equal, if this number is equal to R, then um, again, a fact which was sort of not conjectured by Gross, but it says, uh, he says, uh, it's my guess, is that this belongs to I to the R, where, what is I in this case? This is the kernel from ZG to Z this G. Okay. Uh, and this, this is due to Das Gupta and Spies again. Okay, so that, that's the, that's one side of it. Okay, so again, if S prime is set of all P in S such that P splits in uh, H, P splits completely in H, so this, this is this set which has cardinality r, then again theta s t, this is congruent to determinant of, okay, so now I'll, I'll uh, right, I, I have this u s prime and maybe with a t there, so, so this determinant lives in i to the r, mod i to the r plus one. This element lives in i to the r, and I can look at its image in i to the r plus one. So this is in i to the r, mod i to the r plus one, okay? But this is not the complete picture because what happened to the, the OP and what happened to 
to the L value. So, uh, so what happens is I, I don't write it as a ratio anymore because these are elements in the group ring. So what I write as theta st determinant or i u j minus this thing. So this is equal to this times the complex uh, L function. So I, I think of this as the complex L function. So remember this, this theta RT was an element in Z G, okay? So, uh, so I to the R mod I to the R plus one is, is very close to being sort of, uh, it, it is actually Z G tensored some other uh, augmentation ideal, so, so I won't write that. But the, 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 the upshot of this is p L function uh, is equal to some p regulator, but you have to adjust by, by whatever this is. So, so this, this brings me back to, to Stark's conjecture. So if, if, if I can choose these units, so a p unit, so that my, this determinant is, is, is like, is equal to this, this complex L value, then I can get rid of those two, okay? So, so this is an, un this is an unconditional version of Gross's conjecture. So this is, this is called uh, Gross's towers, tower of fields conjecture. Okay, so uh, this is an unconditional version of this where I, where I don't assume brumer stark conjecture, but if I assume brumer stark conjecture, then for a specific choice of P units, I can get rid of these two. Or not P units, but these uh, uh, elements in, in the, Rubin's lattice, okay, so there are some, there can be some denominators. Okay, so, uh, yeah, doesn't keep going after, for further five minutes, okay. So maybe I'll take a couple of more minutes to, to say how all this relates back to, to Hilbert's 12th problem. So remember, Gross-Stark conjecture gave you, um, uh, some some information about norm of the the p unit. Now uh, my claim is that this gives you more information. So what I'll do is I'll take uh, take uh, p. Okay, so assume that there is only one prime. P above P in in F, okay, and this splits splits completely in H. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll take for my L I'll take uh, H P infinity the uh, the ray class field of conductor P to the infinity. Okay, so so uh, so this tower of field conjecture gives a formula for u. Now there's only one one uh, one prime, so I can take this to be r union this prime sub of p, right? So the the only prime above p. So it gives me a formula for this inside whatever the the Galois group is, right? And what is the Galois group? So the Galois group is um, basically O p cross modulo O f cross bar. Right? So this is by class field theory. So uh, before you got a formula in Z p cross because you're taking norm from this to, to this. So I'm ignoring the p part of it, right? So, so, so for p part you have to do something else, but, um, but it basically gives you a formula in this, which is still not good enough to get a formula for the unit because of this discrepancy with global units. But nevertheless, you, you have gotten more information out of it. And then, um, then if you, if you prove, if you take more general extensions, you can get even more information about it. So I fix an auxiliary prime 
L such that norm of L is 1 mod uh, P to the M, okay? So then Gross gives uh, a formula for U inside. Now this time it's a bigger Galois group, and what is it? It's O mod L cross modulo O F cross bar, okay? And this doesn't look any better, but you have to then work out that OP cross modulo some, some smaller thing. So in general, the, this thing is roughly P to the M. So let me write it as P to the M. So this sits inside this. And actually you can show that your formula happens here. Uh, and so you get, you get even more information because you have got rid of some uh, global ambiguity, okay? And, and then Das Gupta showed in his 2008 paper, which was basically an extension of his thesis, that you can push this to the limit and, and by varying L, and you can actually get a formula for the gross stark unit, okay? So he, got a form, he defined a formula independently, which is a major ingredient in, in making this strategy work. So he got a formula, uh, independently conjectured that it's the gross stark unit, and then he used this, this technique which is called horizontal Iwasawa theory, or in other parts it's called taylor wiles patching, when you vary this L, and, and he showed that, he showed that Gross's tower of field conjecture implies uh, his conjecture. So let me just take one minute and, and state the main theorem without saying anything about the proof. So this is the, this is a work in progress, so, Or, so I have this S prime, right? Uh, if S prime contains uh, primes of same residue characteristic. And because for my Hilbert's 12th problem application, I just took one prime at a time, so in particular R was one, this is, this is enough for, for that, okay? So because our techniques are p-adic, uh, we cannot handle uh, when there are primes in S prime which are of different residue characteristic, and, and we have not tried to handle it. But that's the, okay, that's it. Oh, so he, what he does is, so, yeah, yeah, so, uh, so this is, uh, this is like the global Galois group, and so p adic L function is, is a, usually a measure, I mean, you can interpret it as a measure on Galois group, right? So you can interpret, P, uh, so you, you can think of um, uh, Gross's um, uh, conjecture as giving you uh, a, a formula in terms of this measure. So what, what Samit did was he, he, he lifted this measure from, from a quotient like this and got a measure on, on this, okay? Uh, and then he, he sort of conjectured that gross Stark unit is integral with respect to, to his measure of, of some function. Uh, so x uh, d mu x. And, and then there's some, you know, you have to take care of some p part anyway. So this is some kind of multiplicative measure. Okay. So, so, so he, he, he took the, he took the p-adic L function, lifted it to a measure on, on this, and, and that is not a well-defined thing, but this value is well-defined. So, so that's, that's what formula means in this particular case, by the way, when, when there's only one prime and so on. Uh, when, when there are more than one primes, you, it's, it's more complicated th than this, and it's, it's best written in terms of these uh, Eisenstein co-cycles. But it's again some kind of p-adic integration. 
so the, the, another way to write this formula is this um, this uh, new work by Darmo and, and Jan Fonk, where they define these rigid meromorphic co-cycles and take take their values at uh, at cusps, and they they are also supposed to give these gross stark units. So this is only for real quadratic fields in which p splits. So uh, so they again have a p-adic inti uh, integration, and so. So that formula and this formula should match up when f is totally uh, a real quadratic field. 